Yo dogs, welcome to your 8th CSS animation tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about animation timing functions. <laughs> Alright then dudes, so we've got Mario cycling round and round and Luigi going the opposite way because he's not sure what's going on and uh, you'll notice one thing if you look closely at these anima uh, animations, especially on the Mario one. So when Mario cycles round, you'll probably notice when it gets towards the end, he starts to slow down a little bit, right? And the thing that's controlling that is the animation timing function. So the animation timing function kind of determines um, at the rate at which the element that's being animated kind of goes from point A to B. So right now, the default value of our animation timing function is ease. That's the default value if we don't specify anything. And that basically means that it starts a little slower, then it speeds up in the middle, and then it ends slowly, okay? That's the default value, and that's what's happening to Mario. Now, we can't see the start so much because it's off screen, but if we were to translate this to zero to begin with, you'll notice it starts slow and it ends slow, and then speeds up in the middle, right? So, we can control this and change this behavior by using the property animation timing function. So let's go to Mario and add that one in. Let's say animation, oops, if I can spell animation timing function. Okay, and there's a few different keywords we can use. You can see them in that drop down right there. So currently the default one is ease, which it is at the minute, right? But we can change this to be linear if we prefer. And notice the difference there. Now it's not speeding up or slowing down at all. It's just going a constant speed throughout the whole cycle, right? And in this scenario, that probably makes more sense because it's just going round and round. It's not accelerating and then breaking at the end. It's just going round and round. But there's a few different things we can do as well. So let's go through the different options we have. We can have ease in, which basically just means it starts slow but then it speeds up and it doesn't slow down at the end, just start slow. The opposite of that is ease out, and that basically means that it starts at a normal speed and then it slows down just towards the end, all right? And uh, then we've got ease in hyphen out, and that does something similar to just ease, the default value, in that it starts slower, speeds up in the middle a little, and then it slows down towards the end. There is a subtle difference, but it is subtle and you have to look closely to uh, kind of recognize that. But as well as doing all of these different keywords, we can also pass in our own timing function, which is a cubic Bezier function right there. And we pass through four numbers. Now, right now, that might seem like absolute gobbledygook, but these four numbers actually make up a cubic, uh, cubic Bezier curve, if you like, right? And if you know the four numbers, that make up that curve, you can pop them in there to create your own timing function. Now, it's impossible pretty much, unless you know a lot about these kind of curves, to just pluck those numbers out of thin air. So there is a cool online tool, and it's at cubicbezier.com. I'll leave the link to this down below. And here we can make our own kind of curve by just dragging these from different positions. I'm just gonna refresh this page. Now we can see this curve, right? So these are the kind of default keyword ones we have, ease, linear, um, etc. I'm just gonna make this screen a little bit bigger so we can see the whole thing right there. And yeah, these are the different keywords we have, the different curves that they represent, but we can make our own curve. And we just control it by moving the start and end point uh, little handles like that. And the way this works is the time is going from the left to right along the bottom. So this is when the animation starts, and this is when it ends. And this is essentially how fast the animation occurs. It's called progression right here. So if this is kind of a not steep curve, this means that the progression is going slow over time. So that means that the animation is slow when it's quite, you know, the opposite of steep. Uh, but when the curve is steep like that, it means it's going fast. So if I do a curve something like this, it basically means that at the start, it's gonna be really fast, and then it's gonna peter out, go quite slow in the middle, then towards the end, it's gonna go fast as well. And what that does for us is create this kind of Bezier uh, point curve for us right here. So we can grab that, and we can just copy the coordinates, and then we can pop them into our curve right here, like so. Save that and then come back and see what it does. And you'll notice now it starts off really quickly, like the curve said, peters out in the middle, then ends quickly. All right, 
So that's really cool. We can create our own Cubic Bezier functions to determine the timing of our animations. Most of the time, I just use one of the keywords, but if you do want something specific, it's nice to know that this is here and available for us. All right, so there we go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial.